Welcome to Ladies Talk Show. This is your host, Labor Timer. Ladies, we are right in the middle of the empty bucket. Hold on to your seats, strap your seat belts, okay? We are figuring out how to fill our appreciation bucket and get it so full that we're happy all the time. You don't have to be happy all the time. You know what I'm saying? Like you'll be sa- satiated and all that deep, deep yearning we all have to feel like that what we're, we're validated and what we're doing makes a difference and that what, you know, all this work we're going through instead of resenting it, we feel like, I'm, you know, this is awesome. I'm like, I rock and this is great. So this is how you're going to get the appreciation you need. Now, remember, appreciating yourself and saying, hey, Leia, you're really great. Gets you zero appreciation bucket. Okay. <laughs> Same thing with friends. Oh, I loved how you did that. Zero appreciation, not zero, but, but whatever. But what we know from our sources and our Masura is that the, the appreciation we desperately need from our husband. If he just gives us, you know, uh, again, we're soliciting it. It's our responsibility to get it from him. If we get that met, there's a level of contentment that is available in our life. And it's not available in any other way. So let's get back into it. We did one, two, and three. Oh, I should give you a little review. Okay. We're on um, Marriage Secrets page uh, 163, strategy four. And I'll tell you what strategy one and two are, just for those of you who'd like to be reminded, myself included. One is the prompt method. Remember, that's just, you know, prompting him to say it. The ventriloquist is saying it for him and saying him, say, yeah, that's what I meant. Okay. And then number three is ask directly. And number four, drum roll, is the list. Now, this one, for some people, they're going to read this and they're like, huh, really? That would really work? Believe me, I have had so many emails from my students saying, this is awesome. So this is the list. When you've had a crazy day filled with triumphs and aggravations and feel like no one really cares, get the appreciation you need in the following way. Here's how it's done. Tell your husband, listen, I had a crazy day. I need 10 minutes to download my brain and to vent. All I need for you to do is nod your head. I love this. Okay. Uh, You don't need to step in and fix things. I just need you to appreciate me and understand what I went through and to say, oh, wow, you're terrific at the end of my list. That's all. Okay. And he'll probably say, okay. (laughs) Your husband might roll his eyes, but he'll be, will likely comply. And if you make it a pleasant experience for him, he'll get used to it and it will make you feel validated for all that you do. Also, your husband may be quite intelligent, but since listening without fixing is not his normal nature, don't be upset if he if you have to repeat these instructions each time. It doesn't matter. It doesn't mean he doesn't care. Listening quietly to problems without speaking does not come naturally to husbands. Okay. With <clears throat> oh, wait a second. I skipped a page. Uh, does not come naturally to husbands. Page 164, work hard not to blame him for any of the items on your list or he will get defensive and the session will end prematurely or unpleasantly. And try to thank him both during and after the session just for listening. Make sure he understands just how much it means to you. And most importantly, try your best to stick to the 10 minute limit so he agrees to do it again the next time. Also, if you feel that it's just not, uh, it's not just appreciation you need, but also some advice, let him know. That doesn't negate the purpose of the conversation, but just make sure first and foremost that you get the full appreciation you need in the interaction. Got it, ladies? Yeah, good, I'm getting thumbs up, good. Strategy number five. By the way, try that one. It's remarkable. You just feel like like at the end of your day, you're reading the list or whatever, and you just feel great after because like, oh, it's almost like, you know, if nobody knew they happened, then did they? (laughs) You know, okay. Strategy number five, the prearranged challenge. This one is a game changer for getting your emotions in check. There are certain times when we have a greater need for appreciation than others. For instance, let's say our relationship with our husband's relative is quite challenging. We pack up the kids, go over there, and for three hours, we have to act in a certain way that may not be comfortable or natural for us. But for Shalom, we put in superhuman effort. When we arrive home, what would make it all worthwhile is if our husband would take us aside and say, I realize this was not easy for you. And when my cousin made that one particular comment, I know it must have been hard for you to remain silent. And I was so impressed that you did so. 
I just want you to know how much I admire you and how amazing you are. You are the best wife in the world, and I'm very impressed and grateful. It would be nice, but not realistic. Now, back to reality. In order to make the difficult challenge, challenges easier to bear, it's extremely valuable to discuss the circumstances before they actually happen. That's why it's called the prearranged challenge. Before they actually happen, here's how it's done. In a private moment, you say to your husband, listen, I know it may be hard for you to understand, but I often find it very challenging to go to your cousin's house. I don't want to say Lushan Hara gossip, but this is Latuelis, purposeful, so, th so that you can help support me through this. Of course, I will still go. But what would make it so much easier for me is to know that you feel for me and appreciate all of my efforts. It will, it, I know it will be hard for you to remember to tell me afterwards how grateful you are, but I truly need that appreciation from you to make me feel better about this situation. So can I ask you a favor? This is all you're saying this to your husband. So can I ask you a favor? As soon as possible, after we get home, can I pull you aside and I will tell you all the things that I need praise for? I will list them and you, all you have to do is nod your head and listen. I know it may, may seem silly to you, but it would mean so much to me. Men do extremely well when they are given clear, doable tasks. They will usually at least be willing to tr give this a try and do not use this praise session as an opportunity to point out all of the things he did wrong at his cousin's house. <laughs> Just list your good deeds and thoughts for which you want to, him to acknowledge you. If you're in a bad mood and won't handle the session well, Skip it until the mood passes and be sure to praise him lavishly for praising you. With practice, you'll be building a very satisfying routine in your marriage. Okay, ladies, here we go. So Gila, what do we got? Okay, so Dina asks, I practiced the prompt strategy and it worked really well with my husband, but I couldn't help but feel a little vain afterwards. Like I'm working to boost my ego. Is that normal? And with time, will that feeling go away? Feeling may or may not go away. I'm not sure, but uh, boosting your ego is a good thing. <laughs> okay. There's nothing wrong. With, look, we are in a society where it's like, oh, it's nothing. It's nothing. You know, we ne and even if we take it in, it doesn't go into our neshama. It doesn't fill our soul. And we have to be on that level where we just let the praise shower over us, let our soul feel it. Because here's how the reality of the world. You have a neshama, a soul, and you have a goof, your body, okay? And your goof is like a, a, a little kid, <laughs> never goes beyond like five or six years old, always, yeah, I want my way, I want, you know, whatever, needs praise, needs the patting on the head, like that. That's your, bo your, your body. And for the whole life, you can be 90 years old and still need that kind of what you're calling ego boosting or whatever. Very, very important. Your neshama is carrying you forward, God willing, improving your character traits, getting your body to do things it doesn't want to go like, oh, I'm so tired, but oh, the sick person down the street really could use a visitor. You know, your, your, your soul and the, the highest part of yourself, that part of your, your soul that is connected to God himself, that part of you wants to do the right thing. And it's constantly, conscious, constantly pushing the goof. Let's go, let's go, let's go, right? And the goof needs praise. So even though in, in, intellectually you're like, really, I'm, I'm boosting my ego, I'm just praising myself, like really? You're doing it for your goof. Your goof needs it. Don't be shy about it. Don't be embarrassed of it. It might get easy, be, easier because it becomes a habit. But intellectually, it seems like really? Here's the thing you have to know. Our Shalom Bias Masura, 3,000 year old bulletproof track record of how to make you happiest on the planet Earth forever, okay, says that a woman needs this appreciation and that she needs it from her husband. So go for it. Go full out. Don't have any compunctions about doing it. And look, if you did it at a work setting and you're like, oh, didn't I do that report? Great boss. And, and I'm like, boss, how do you like how I straighten the pencils in the drawer? Whatever it is, you know, okay. Uh, like, nah, that's not, you know, you're going to come across looking kind of weird. Um, but for your husband, no limit. Again, as he fills your bucket, you'll feel less desperate need to fill that bucket, but you still need to be doing it every single day because if you don't do it 
your bucket gets empty and then you're in a grouchy mood and you think it's because he said something or the kid didn't do something or that it didn't work out with the insurance company, whatever it is, it'll take it out on everything else. And a lot of it has to do with our empty bucket. Okay. Next question. Good. Hey, great validation for her. Yeah. Okay. Tirza asks, I'm worried the list method will just sound like I'm fetching. My husband is allergic to fetching. Excellent. Okay. So this has to do with communication pre-arranged. In other words, if you were to just do it, say, oh, here, I just need to tell you what I did today. He's going to be like, uh, okay. But if you say, listen, you know, I realize that sometimes I feel um, like I really, um, I did all this stuff today and nobody knows, you know? Really, it kind of makes me feel like like sad, you know? So if I just list it out to you, I'm not complaining. I'm not saying you should have done it. Or, there's no other goal. There's no other subtext or subcommunication that's going on here. This is all from my heart to your heart to let you know. So at the end of it, you can say, I get it. I, you know, it, I, I need that validation. I know it's ridiculous or whatever, but apparently women need that validation. I think if I just do it, it'll take us five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever, done. And then I'll have the sense of like, well, okay. You know, so uh, you just need to pre-sell them on it. It is awkward. It is weird. Um, it's very funny. I had a, a student who I was telling about these appreciation things, you know, and actually was on, on the prompt method. And she, you know, she was like from an old school. And I mean, she, I think she could trace her lineage back to King David, I don't know, you know, whatever she was like, whatever. She was like looking at her like, what is this newfangled stuff that Leia is tell teaching me? You know, like I don't know, just somehow it just feels awkward and like, you know, some kind of a new fad. And, you know, whatever she she told me this after, by the way. <laughs> so uh, she didn't tell me at the time might have hurt my feelings, but I don't mind you hurting my feelings because it's not. I didn't make this stuff up, you know, um, I mean, made up the, the uh, procedures, but I didn't make up the deep spiritual need that a woman has because God gave it to us. And then he told us. So anyway, so she she went home for um, our, the, the class, had a break. Uh, I don't remember what it was. It was for Shabbos or Yentif or something. She went, but she came, she came back and she raised her hand in front of the whole class, which was very sweet of her. And she said, oh, Leah, I want you to know. Everything you're saying is right. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> wow, thank you. And she says, no, 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 you don't get it. I was at the Shabbos table with my bubby. And after we're all eating the soup and my bubby look, looks up to Zadie and says to him, you know, the soup came out pretty good today, didn't it, dear? And he's like, yeah, yeah, oh, it's delicious. It's delicious. What did you put in there? Right. This is her Bubby and Zay. So she, it like validated for her that this is our Masora. This is how it should be done. And she said, as soon as she heard it, she's like, oh, yeah, I recognize that. My Bubby does that all the time. So anyway, try this at home. This is one of those things you got to you just got to keep practicing it, trying it. And the list, just tell your husband, even say, I am not complaining. I'm just getting the appreciation I need. Very good. You guys are great. Asking great questions. OK, go ahead, Gail. Okay, beautiful. Love the last line. I'm not complaining. I'm just expressing. Okay. <laughs> Shippy asks, I feel like if I use the list method, my husband will tune me out, even if I only do it for 10 minutes. He's not a great listener. Right. Okay. So that's a good question. So again, this one also could be pre-selling him on the idea. But then the other thing is, if he's not a good listener, maybe if you make your to-do list in the morning or whatever you do, your index card or on a, on a you know a phone or on a, uh, a on a t you type it out or whatever you do, you have your list. And at the end of the day, when he eats dinner, right, you have it sitting <laughs> right behind by him, and you give him notice. Say. I, you know, while you start dinner, I just want you to read my list and to, you know, say, wow, ooh, ooh, ah, woo, wow. <laughs> like, okay. Just like go through the list and just, just, well, just tell me how proud you are of me. And that's it. M maybe that works. You know, again, you've got to, ladies have to use your own creativity. You know, your husband better than I do. But the, the bottom line is you have to figure out strategies to get the appreciation you need. Don't let this go. Don't say, well, you know, my husband's not that type and I can't do it and it's too much, it's more trouble than it's worth and blah, blah, blah. Make this a priority in your life because we know that 
women walk around with a lot of resentment. If you talk about your, if you talk to your friends or you talk to, you know, uh, colleagues, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, people from your show, whatever, if you talk to them, people, are, you know, like uh, you can believe it. I was up till three in the morning making kugels and, oh, I've got so many people forget Shabbos guests. And my husband just like invited another family. Like, uh, like he thinks that the food gets made by itself, you know, whatever. There's a lot of resentment and there's a lot of um, upset around all that we have to manage. The way out of that is getting the appreciation you need. This is what Hazal said. I read you the <laughs> many stories about a woman looks to her husband for appreciation and he's incapable of giving that appreciation. He's, he's missing the DNA. He's missing the gene, whatever. So as soon as a woman, okay, I get it. Begrudgingly, you know, I get the question all the time. Why do I have, you know, I have to say, I'm sorry first. I have to this. I have to, why is it on me to get appreciation from him? So I don't know why God made it this way. I don't know why he made us the bottomless pit of needing appreciation and gave us husbands who didn't know how you couldn't do it. I don't know why. Ask God. You know, I don't know. But I do know one thing. The moment a woman takes the responsibility for getting that appreciation, you know, through these tricks and tips and techniques and this six things that I'm going through with you. The minute a woman does that, her whole life changes. Like, now she's happy. Now she feels appreciated. Now she gets the, the satisfaction and the savoring of life that she is looking for. You guys are great. Okay, what's the next question? Okay, beautiful. So Meira asks, I tried some of these methods and it's nice to hear him say he appreciates me, but I still find myself resentful that I'm doing so much. What can I do? I get that. I get that. So... It could be, there's two options here. One is that you just need to keep it up, keep it up, keep it up. Actually, three options. One, keep it up, you know, keep doing it, and eventually it, you'll, it'll help satisfy you. The second option is that you, um, it could be something in you, a, 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 a I don't want to say a, a broken part or a, a, like a, a, a a bad, a bad pattern or bad dysfunctional pattern. In other words, if you, when you're a little girl, if let's say you had a parent who never told the truth. So, you know, they picked up the phone and says, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't pick up. I was at a meeting and you saw she was sitting on the couch. And then she says, uh, you know, um, oh, yeah, there were there were 50 people at the party last night. And, you know, there was only 30. So everything that comes out of your mom's mouth, you don't believe. Right. So now she says, you look beautiful. And you're like, yeah, all right. You know, oh, I, you did a great job at that. You're like, yeah, all right. So you don't believe her. So now whatever you've developed a pattern in your life of not trusting what somebody says or not being able to let it soak in because of that lack of trust. I'm just using one example of sort of a dysfunctional pattern. And I'm calling it dysfunctional pattern because guess what? We all like there's nobody who doesn't have these weird, quirky things, whatever God created the world. And those things were meant to happen to us and whatever above my above my pay grade, this conversation. But I'm just saying that those patterns that we develop are very hard to recognize and get rid of. So if you want to the way to look to recognize them is do some introspection and say, you know, that's true. Maybe my husband could give me all the appreciation he wanted and I would never feel it. Right. You know, because of this dysfunctional pattern. So doing that introspection, you're like, Oh, okay. That's like 90% of the battle of getting over some a dysfunctional pattern is recognizing it and doing the introspection necessary. So now when you, now you've recognized that, let's say, and your husband gives you a compliment. You're like, you you start, you look, oh my gosh, I have a shield. He's putting it in and I'm blocking it. And slowly but slowly, you'll be able to push this down just by practicing, staying on purpose about it. And, and you know, maybe keep a journal or write it down, say, let appreciation in from now on. You don't have to be stuck in the past. You don't have to have that pattern and not feel that sense of satisfaction. So this is work that you can do in your in yourself. And then the third thing that could be stopping this is you just haven't done it long enough. Just keep trying. Just keep going for it. Just keep, you know, um, soliciting that appreciation, making lists, doing prompt, trying different methods, whatever. Put your focus on it and Hashem will help you because this is this flow from your husband to you. The husband is the giver. And the wife is the receiver. And this flow from, this is a Gemara, but they also, Rav Moshe Cordovero says, all bracha comes from Shemayim through the husband that's a conduit and to the wife. So this appreciation that is blocked, 
you know, from a million different ways. Our society tells us we shouldn't, you know, whatever. Why do I need approval from him? I get that all the time from women. Sad. Because we know, as I'll tell us, women need appreciation from their husband like oxygen. And yeah, the way society rips that to shreds is very, very sad. So a woman doesn't get the appreciation she needs and she walks around resentful and feeling unfulfilled. So this is a very crucial journey for each woman to take to find out what she needs to do to get the appreciation she needs. And these, these tools are just a starting ground. You can make stuff up. You can think, you know, what really gets me appreciated when he sets the table for me. <laughs> I don't know, whatever, you know? Um, so you have to know yourself. You have to do introspection, start with these because they're just simple and they're all off the shelf uh, appreciation techniques. And then you'll take it from there, but use your creativity. This is very, very crucial to your happiness. Okay. Go ahead, Gila. Really important points. Yeah. Okay. So Shira asks, I'm afraid that if I tell my husband directly that I need all this appreciation, it will make me look low in his eyes. Can this happen? That's wonderful. So there's a key to closeness that um, I think is very misunderstood in this world. I think, you know, everybody like TMI, too much information, you know, people share everything like embarrassing on, on social media, whatever. Um, uh, and, um, but with the people they love the most, there's a blockage and bricks that they put around themselves, cement bricks. And they, you know, like this, you know, they, they conceal themselves through a wall of bricks and they are afraid to be, and this is the operative word, vulnerable. That the key to closeness is vulnerability and being able to, as you said, look lower in your husband's eyes. So it's one thing to look, to put yourself down and to say, oh, I'm so stupid right? Your husband should hate when you say that. He's like, don't call my wife stupid. That makes him look like he's married the wrong lady. <laughs> you know? So um, there's a, a very, very um, big difference between putting yourself down and being vulnerable. And the being vulnerable to in, in, in with your husband is, a, with anyone really is a secret to closeness, but you have to be careful because if you, you know, let's say you tell your husband, you know, I'm feeling kind of moody and like, like, I don't know. I, 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 you know, I went to this event and I just felt like no one was interested in talking to me. And, you know, uh, he'd be like, Oh, I'm sorry. You feel that way. I'm sure it's not true. Whatever. He'll build you back up. Whereas if you say that to, you know, a neighbor or something, they're like, gosh, she's just like all in her head. We're all, all in it. All, all in our head. <laughs> okay. So you're not alone. You know, we all have those thoughts and those feelings and whatever, and, and it's fine, but you know, from the outside world, there is a certain, you know, um, you don't need to be vulnerable in front of everybody, but your close friends, there is uh, something to be said for that and uh, certainly for your husband. So this thing of looking lower in your husband's eyes um, by needing that appreciation and, and whatever, you can you can say to him, you know, it makes me feel vulnerable or it makes me feel less than or it makes me feel like, you know, something's wrong with me. But I, from my understanding, that's how all women are. My understanding is that God created women with a deep need for appreciation. And uh, even though I'm embarrassed to get it and embarrassed to ask for it, I know women need it. So I'm assuming I also need it or I, you know, I know I need it, you know, so I'm sorry if it's, you know, a little bit different than how our relationship has been or whatever, but I think that's going to make me a lot happier, sweetheart. And I hope you'll be able to work with me on this project I have for getting the appreciation that a woman so desperately needs. And it doesn't mean that for the last 10 years, you've been a bad husband. I didn't know I needed it myself. So how could you possibly have known? But now that I know, I'm going to have to do a couple of tricks and techniques and whatever, and it, you know, it's going to be uncomfortable for me, but I think it's important for both of us and for our relationship. And hopefully, you know, you'll, you'll soften his heart enough that he'll, he'll, uh, he'll go along with it. Okay, good. What do we got? Okay, hey, amazing. Um, Naama asks, I've been trying these methods, but my husband hasn't been responding the way I need. He's usually half listening on his phone and just says, yeah, yeah, you're amazing, et cetera, et cetera. I tried discussing with him preemptively about my need for appreciation, and he says he totally understands. But then in the moment, he doesn't respond very enthusiastically. Any tips? 
Very good. Um, yeah, it, this is just a communication thing. It's kind of, you told him and he says, oh, yeah, good, good. I'll, you know, whatever. So then you just need to have another conversation. Again, we need a quiet time conversation. This is not in the middle of it. That's not when Bolster and the kids are here and the, the, and you're running there and the phone calls and whatever in your quiet time with your husband. Okay. And everyone needs to carve that out. I have many shows on that. Um, with the, in the quiet time with your husband, you need to say, you know, I felt so heard last time we brought this up about appreciation. I felt really like you got it. Um, like I communicated it well. I don't know if I did, but, you know, it felt like I communicated it well and it felt like you listened to it well. But then in the heat of the moment, I feel like, you know, it the, it went in one ear, out the other or whatever. You know, in the heat of the moment, I think you're so distracted instead of putting them on the defensive and making them feel bad, you know, I think you're so distracted like we all are, but I think you're so distracted that you don't realize bing, 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 you know, this is a time when, you know, my wife needs appreciation. So is there something I can do? Again, you're handing the problem to your husband. And for those of you on the podcast listening, I'm taking my hands and cupping them and two, one hand and the other and like making a bowl and handing it to my husband and saying, is there any way you can think of that in the heat of the moment, you can be showing appreciate. When I need appreciation, you can be showing it. And, uh, you know, let's see what he says. He might say, you know, when I, I get so distracted. And you ask me at the time that's not good for me. You know, you're like, yeah, but, you know, I don't think it's ever going to be a time that's good for you when I feel when, and I'm, when I'm low on appreciation bucket. It means I just start doing things with resentment and feeling upset and whatever. And then that's even worse scenario because then I feel like I don't treat you well and I'm not nice to you and I don't take care of you appropriately. I don't take care of the kids. I do everything with resentment. I mean, it's just I, I recognize that when I'm not appreciated, that's how I feel. So do you want me to say, you know, maybe I'll put a post-it note on your thing saying I need appreciation now, but maybe that's not fast enough. Maybe you'll forget the, the post-it note. Should I do you think I should just say, you know, I need appreciation now. Can we just step outside? Can we put our phones down and can you just step you know, outside or step into you know, the hallway or whatever and just tell me how awesome I am? Something like that. What do you think? And brainstorm it out. Get creative and brainstorm it out. So that's the um, uh, um, again. If a person is motivated enough, they can accomplish miracles. And God helps us with these kinds of things. If a person is motivated, the way God, the way a person walks, God will, uh, will, will help them. So if you are motivated in this and you are um, with a full heart trying to do Hashem's will, this is creating shalom bias in your house. And this is direct you know, advice about getting the appreciation you need from your husband. And if you go forward with this, God will help you. And God willing, God willing, you will see Hatzlacha with it. It might take more conversations. It might take deeper thinking and introspection. It might take looking at making, seeing whether he is appreciating and you're not receiving it. A lot of, lot of um, uh, very powerful things are going on behind the scenes to make this either work or not work. But if you put your attention to this, God will help you. Amen. <laughs> okay. Amen. Amen. Okay. okay. So um, the, uh, I'm going to get, I've got to give you your homework. I think we're out of time here. Um, I've got to give you your homework, which is um, one time this week. If you can do it more, that's great. But one time this week, try to solicit appreciation from your husband with one of the techniques we talked about so far. We've done five. We're going to do the next one in the next show. This is Leah Retirement for the Ladies Talk Show. We'll see you next time. And good luck, everybody. Work on this. Work on this. You'll be happy. You'll be satisfied. Go for it. If you want more, we have so much more. If you want to learn our Masora and have an awesome marriage, the first thing we have is a foundations course. It's a 13-week course. You get all your questions answered. It's live with me. And you can ask Q&A. It's awesome. Second thing we have is a coaching program. If you are awesome with people and you want to know the Masora better than 99% of the people on the planet Earth, like for reals, okay? It's a four-month program. It's very intense. We have major scholarships and we have somebody who's who's granted in a lot to pay for a big bulk of it. It's still a little expensive, but for what you get, and then you can char start charging money to know it. That's the coaching program. Don't miss it. Go to www ladiestalkshow.com look up the foundations course look up the coaching we do retreats we do all kinds of stuff you'll find it there www.ladiestalkshow.com thanks for being with us Leah Richheimer for the Ladies Talk Show <laughs>